Hello again folks and welcome to another EP support screencast. This time we're going to be looking at creating your development plans. So once you've spoken through all the skills, tactics and fitness components, the EP assessment will then ask you what do you want to develop in terms of your area for development. Do not forget that the area for development you select for whatever sport or activity you've chosen, it must be one of the weaknesses that you've mentioned already in the assessment. Okay, You can't, for example, say that speed is now a weakness that you want to work on if you haven't mentioned it already in the assessment earlier on. So please make sure that whichever area you pick for the development plan, it is part of the assessment that you've mentioned as part of your test already. Once you've decided on the area for development you want to look at, remember, it doesn't have to be the biggest weakness, it's just an area that you want to improve for the performer. The first thing you must do is state to the examiner what is the area for development you want to look at. For example, first touch is the area I want to look at for the footballer. The minute you state that, you must justify why you have chosen that for that performer. This can be tricky for people because often they skim over this bit, but you need to take your time because it's worth quite a few marks on the mark scheme. So take your time and clearly justify why this is a problem area for your performer in any way from what you can see. If they continue to do that skill incorrectly, what would be any issues for that performer? be it for them, be it for the team. Don't just think about issues to do with the skill itself. Think about psychological issues for the performer. So will it affect them psychologically? Will it cause them to become anxious when they're in that situation again? Think about group development and team development. So it could be that a player may not get pass to on a regular basis because their skill in this particular aspect is ineffective. You need to have a long list of reasons as to why you are picking that area. And if you only come up with one sentence out of this, then your mark is going to be a lot less than for other people that can justify this in a bit more detail. So make sure you take your time, make sure you think about good reasons as to why that is the area you want to be looking at and focusing at. Other things to think about, think about how this would help their game in the future. You could talk about that by developing that aspect. So once you've done that bit first, you then state the following things next. So this is like a running order. So I've talked about, I want to improve my first touch, for example. I've then got to say how long I need to work on that performer's first touch. So how long is your development plan? Now my advice here is to go for eight weeks. Once you have spoken that you've given an eight-week training program, why are you giving them an eight-week training program? Why can't I do it in one week? Why can't I do it in 20 weeks? Give me some reasons why you need eight weeks. And in this aspect, I would ask you to think about some theory, psychological theory. Why do I need eight weeks to do something? I might want to groove a skill. I want to develop kinesthesis for a skill. I want to create a formed mental image. I want to create some motor programs. So give me some justification there. Again, the more you can justify, the better. Give me some physiological justification for that. Why do I need eight weeks? Well, actually, I need to tone, strengthen the, the gluteus maximus, the rectus femoris, in order for the first touch to be much more effective for my footballer. Give me some physiological reasons as to why you need eight weeks and psychological reasons. Again, once you've done that bit, you then talk about the sessions themselves. Roughly, how long do you want your sessions? Remember, this isn't something specific. We're not actually doing the training sessions, and it is over eight weeks, so your time frames might differ. But you might say something like 30 minutes is the length of my sessions, and we're having them three times a week, or we're having them once a week. It doesn't matter. But you've got to make that statement as to how long those sessions are and how often you want them. And again, you need to justify why you're doing that. 
Why are you only giving them one session of 30 minutes a week? Well, it could be the performers already at a decent standard. They should be doing three training sessions of their other club rugby or club football or club netball. They might be in education. So they might be a full-time job. Sorry, not full-time job, part-time job. Full-time education. Therefore, they've got a lot of time constraints. So therefore, doing one simple session of 30 minutes a week should be enough to effectively change that technique of a skill, etc., etc. You've got to give some justification here. So, areas for development, followed by how long your development plan is, followed by how long your sessions, all justified. Once you've done that, you then must clearly state that you have decided to split your training program into microcycles. Again, the advice is to pick three microcycles because that make, makes logical reason. If I'm doing eight weeks or even nine weeks of a training program, a microcycle is roughly between one and three weeks, then that's three microcycles. And once you've done that, briefly justify why you would split it into microcycles. Think about if I didn't do any sort of microcycle planning, what would happen if I just did 24 sessions straight of similar things, what could be the problem for my performer? Think about things like burnout, think about things like fatigue. But by doing the microcycle planning, I can I can stretch in some goal setting. I can allow them some time for rest and recovery and plan that in. I can allow them a peak training period. I can allow them to taper at certain points around their competition. So all these things about Microsoft, go back to your work on periodization, start looking at those as the reasons why you give the microcycles. Again, think about the time you need to cover all of this stuff, but be very, very conscious of the fact that this test is only 30 minutes long. So you want enough detail to cover these things, but you probably want to give yourself enough time to speak through the training program and all your theory as well. So it needs to be concise, whatever you've decided to write. Finally, once you have talked about your area for improvement, the number of weeks you need, the sessions you need a week, that you're going to split it into microcycles, we then must talk about the microcycles one by one. So you start off with microcycle one, and when you talk about each microcycle, you must contain the following things when you do it. Firstly, Start off your statement by saying the aims of your microcycle. So, microcycle one, the aims of microcycle one would be to develop the technique of the footballer's first touch or to, to correct the technique of the footballer's first touch in this first phase. Each microcycle requires some coaching points. My advice is to stick to four. So, it could be the aim of this microcycle is to improve the footballer's technique of the first touch to correct it. I will be focusing on the following four coaching points, such as body in line with the ball, head focusing on the ball, etc., etc. So some simple points to do with that skill that you're trying to develop or whatever else you're trying to develop, fitness component or tactic. You would then move on to some of the practices that you would include in that microcycle. We call those progressive practices, PPs. For each microcycle, we're looking at a minimum of two progressive practices. So you start your progressive practice off. That's a basic drill. Remember to give all your distances, your times, your, how much you're giving them for relief, how many times they're attempting something. Are they getting any breaks? Is there a defender in a certain aspect or position? Give as much detail as you can in those practices because that is worth marks. You need to give the detail because remember, it's a verbal test. You need to somehow explain concisely, but with detail, what the drill is that you want to show the performer will be using. And once you've designed that drill, each progressive practice must therefore have very small progressions. So three progressions in which you can make that drill harder or more challenging for the performer. For example, the aim of microcycle one will be to develop the performer's footballer, footballer's first touch and correct those errors in technique of the first touch. The coaching points for this would be 
that I would use within this microcycle and get to focus on. Body in line with the ball for the performer, head and eyesight focusing on the ball, watching the ball onto their foot. They would then choose the correct surface area to control the ball with, and they would make sure they cushion the ball on a certain part of their body in order to control that ball. A progressive practice I would use within this microcycle might be the performer 10 yards away from a coach. A coach would show a demonstration of the correct form of cushioning the ball with the inside of their feet and down and towards the, the floor. The practice would begin with the coach 10 yards away from my performer. They would feed in 10 balls to the performer's dominant foot. The performer would then cushion the ball down and they would aim to keep the ball within a one meter by one meter square area after 10 balls. After 10 balls, they will repeat that action on the opposite side of their feet. And after this, we would give them some small feedback. My progression from that would be to stand 20 yards away and feed the balls in with spin and height to the football. A further progression with that would be I'd add a shallow defender just to stand in the box beside them and right behind them to increase the focus of that performer. And the final progression would therefore be to add height, spin, and alternate feet and add in pressure from the defender, full pressure, so that performer can concentrate on their first touch and keeping it within that box. So as you can see there, I've gone through all those four things. I would then move on to my next progressive practice and do the same thing. Added to all of this, we've then got to add in our theory, which if you look at the next screencast, it will tell you how to add the theory in. So once you've discussed your progressive practices, my advice would then be to come in with some theory somewhere after that, but look at the next screencast to give you some help with that one. Okay, once again, thanks for listening. And if you need any more help with the A-Level PE OCR process, please head to the ISP PE channel on YouTube.